Well, time for a real doctor, Dr. Ben Carson. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, thanks. And your book is America the Beautiful, Rediscovering What Made This Nation Great. What made this nation great, in your opinion? Well, we had policies that uh, encouraged people to work hard. You know, the, they were the beneficiaries and their families were the beneficiaries. Uh, that was one of the things that made us great. We had a, a country that was for, of, and by the people. Every, the people were the central thing. The government wasn't the central thing. Now it's for, of, and by the government, the very thing that our forefathers feared and tried to keep us from uh, from moving toward. And uh, also we were uh, people who had values and principles. Uh, we were we were God-fearing people with Judeo-Christian values, and uh, all of those things seem to be uh, fading from our memories. You know, they're not only fading from our memories, but if you dare to talk about these things uh, in certain yeah. news outlets, you're going to be viciously attacked, and you have been viciously attacked. And I'll be honest with you, I've been watching this from a distance. You and I have never spoken before, right? That's correct. I've been watching this from a distance. I read your book. It's superb. Uh, your background is, uh, is the American dream, and, um, um, and, and it's, it sort of all comes together in your life. And um, these attacks on you, I have to ask you, you're a religious man. Do these attacks make you want to speak out more and do more, or do they cause you to second-guess coming out and talking like this? No, they make me recognize what serious trouble we're in. And uh, what has really brought it home to me is, you know, I've gotten so many uh, letters of support or phone calls or emails uh, from people who believe similarly but are afraid to speak out because they think there may be retribution. And uh, it basically it, it proves what I was saying at the National Prayer Breakfast, that political correctness is threatening to destroy our nation because it puts a muzzle over honest conversation. And the fabric of our nation is changed without the benefit of a conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. They don't want a conversation, do they? They don't want us to engage. In fact, they... Uh, they... No, they want to shut us up completely. Yeah. And, 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 and that's why the attacks against me have been so vicious, because I, I represent you know, an existential threat to them. They need to shut me up. They need to get rid of me. They can't find anything else to delegitimize me. So they take my words, misinterpret them, and, uh, and try to make it seem that I'm a bigot. And uh, you're, you're attacked also in many respects because of your race, because you're not supposed to think like this and talk like this. A lot of white liberals just don't like it, do they? Well, I, you know, they're the most racist people there are because, you know, they put you in a little category, a little box. You have to think this way. How could you dare come off the plantation? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you, you've been on networks like MSNBC. I mean, that's not really a news network. That's just a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of uh, leftist hosts who dress up as phony reporters and attack guests they don't like and so forth. Is that something you're going to continue to do? You think taking your case, are you thinking taking your case to the, those places is worthwhile? Well, you know, I, I'm not uh, afraid of, of any of them because, you know, I, it's, for me it's very easy. All I have to do is tell the truth. You know, I don't have a particular agenda uh, that I'm pushing. So it's going to be pretty difficult uh, for them to trip me up. I'm going to just tell the truth. And I'll tell the truth wherever I go, on a liberal media or on a conservative media. After you spoke at the, uh, at the, at the National Prayer event and uh, you sat down, did the president say anything to you or they just ignored you pretty much? No, no, he came over. Uh, he came over and shook my hand and said he appreciated me being there. Mm -hmm. He didn't say he appreciated the speech, <laughs> but he did appreciate me being there. <laughs> <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever hear from the White House after that? No, I haven't heard heard a word since then. Mm -hmm. Were there any? Were there weren't? I mean, n nobody uh, told you what you could or couldn't say, or did they when you went there? Well, I mean, there were some who uh, said, you know, m make sure that you don't give a political speech, and make right. sure you know that you don't offend the president. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you don't have to... well, the way I kind of look at it, um, you know, I was there talking about some of the very serious issues that threaten the fabric of our nation, diagnosing a severe problem uh, that is spiritual as well. And uh, some people said, well, why did you bring up, you know, the Bible and God? Duh, it's a prayer breakfast. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's just so interesting, you know, the, the way that people think or don't think. Well, what's amazing to me is, is, you know, we have this Bill of Rights, we have the First Amendment, we have this tradition of free speech, and some of the speech is absolutely awful and horrific. And you speak what are basically um, about traditional values, traditional principles, the principles that undergird this society and our founding, and somehow this is controversial. Uh, isn't that amazing? But uh, I'll tell you what also uh, I found fascinating is all of the communications I've gotten from elderly, particularly Americans, who said they had totally given up until now. Now they felt maybe there was just a ray of hope. They thought our country was gone. And a lot of people have been just bludgeoned into silence. It amazes me. Uh, some of the letters I get from students on campuses, they just feel that they can't speak out or they're going to have retribution. It's awful what's going on in our nation. Freedom of speech has been totally forgotten about. Are you going to uh, be giving that commencement speech or not at Johns Hopkins? Uh, to be determined. It's still, it's still up in the air. It, 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 you know, there were, there were eight students who, who signed a, a petition. Uh, and that was not from the graduating class. That was from all the classes. That was what they could come up with. Uh, there are others who feel very strongly uh, in the other direction. But, you know, I'm going to wait and see. I, I think it's a, a wonderful opportunity, quite frankly, uh, for a university uh, to use a thermometer and to, to gauge its own um, feelings toward uh, some of the liberties that are so much uh, expressed in higher education. I, you know, I suspect even if you do give that speech, there will be some who try and shout you down, some who may walk out, and some who may do these sorts of things. But uh, that won't deter you, will it? No. Uh, you know, when, when you're dealing with an entrenched system uh, that does not want to change, and you start doing things that are contrary to its ideological beliefs, believe me, you're going to get some major pushback. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I have totally been expecting uh, the pushback and the demonization, that totally expecting it. But uh, I don't think it's going to take root because... Uh, over the course of time, people will see that there's very little to, the, to their arguments. It's amazing how much is done in this country by the federal government against the will of the people or without the knowledge of the people, isn't it? Well, uh, it's, I'm not sure that the government really cares that much what the people think. Mm -hmm. You know, the majority of people were against Obamacare, but, you know, that didn't stop anything from happening. You know, for some strange reason, we've forgotten that the government works for the people and not the people for the government. Mm -hmm. And partly it's the fault of the people because, you know, Congress has an, a 9% approval rating, yet we return people to the office at a rate of 90%. There's a major disconnect there. It means, you know, people go in that booth and they just say, oh, there's a name that looks familiar. Or they just say, there's a D or there's an R, I'll vote for that. You know, that is really shirking one's responsibility. And that's the very thing that the founders of this nation were talking about when they said, our system depends on a well-informed and educated populace. And if they ever become something other than that, the nature of the country will change. What does your family think about all this attention to you? Uh, well, I mean, they're they're all very supportive. Every everyone is supportive. 
you know, uh, you know, my kids grew up with the same kinds of values. And, and, and the things that I talk about, they're value-based things. And, uh, you know, I'm never going to, to give up those things that are personal values and those things that have been advocated by God in the Bible, regardless of what man comes along and says they're okay now. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the attitude the, uh, the founders took and expressed, um, and among other places, the Declaration of Independence, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and speaking of the Declaration of Independence, you know, five doctors signed it. And I like to bring that up when people say, you're a doctor, you shouldn't be talking about these things. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that uh, kind of shuts them up. By the way, what about that? It seems like uh, I hear people now saying uh, only governors should run for president, only this, only that. I'm thinking to myself, where did that come from? Well, you know, I think it's the political class uh, who, who likes to maintain uh, their power. What you need really uh, to govern is wisdom. Wisdom makes a whole lot of sense in these situations. Somebody who can take facts, take data, analyze it, use advisors wisely, and make wise decisions Mm -hmm. that are good for all the people, not for a particular party or particular special interest groups. All right, my last question. I'm not going to ask you if you're going to run for office because I don't think you know if you're going to run for office. But I, but I am going to ask you this. What, you are retiring. Uh, you, you had a very prestigious position. You're, you're a world-renowned surgeon, brain surgeon. Um, what in the immediate future do you think you might do? Well, I mean, I've already got ten international trips scheduled and mm-hmm. multiple... Um, speaking engagements. Uh, our scholarship fund is continuing to grow. You know, I'm very concerned about the education of our young people. Uh, we're putting in reading rooms all over the country, uh, particularly targeting Title I schools where kids come from homes with no books, go to schools with no libraries. Those are the ones who drop out. We can't afford to have that going on in our society, particularly in the information age. So. Uh, I'm going to be devoting a lot of attention to those kinds of things, and you know, I'm going to start working on a new book also. What is the name of your foundation if people want to check it out? Uh, CarsonScholarsFund.org. Let's uh, let's post that, Mr. Producer, on my social sites. Absolutely. And it's a great book. It's America the Beautiful: Rediscovering What Made This Nation Great. And God bless you, my friend. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Same to you. All right. Take care. Dr. Ben Carson. Though well, you've heard him. You've seen him. I've never talked to him before, and I wanted the opportunity. And uh, quite a remarkable man. The people who attack him are your typical dregs of society, may I say. <laughs>